Hey everyone, Miguel Benitez here helping you on the search for thoughtful Christianity. It's Easter Sunday and this is video number seven of seven in which I've been laying out lines of evidence for the historicity of the resurrection of Jesus. In this video I will give you one last line of evidence but first I want to tackle very briefly two theories that have been put forward by skeptics in an attempt to explain the facts around the resurrection of Jesus. Claim number one is the oldest, and that is that that the disciples stole the body of Jesus. This theory comes to us from Roman skeptics who were claiming that the disciples had stolen the body and that that is why Jesus was missing from the tomb. Now, the first problem with this is that, as with conspiracies, the more people involved, the harder it is to pull off. And so, it would be worth noting that we don't have a single historical writing from any of the disciples or any of the people involved in the conspiracy releasing the true story, so to speak. And that would be important, because oftentimes, you do find that the more people involved in conspiracies, the more likely it is to have a whistleblower. And we have no such whistleblower in this scenario. But number two, it fails to account for the dramatic conversion of the Apostle Paul. Paul doesn't tell us that it was the empty tomb that persuaded him of the resurrection, but rather that it was Jesus appearing to him. Number three, the empty tomb being accounted for by the stealing of the body by the disciples fails to account for the lives that the disciples would go on to live. The disciples dedicated themselves to this message of Christianity. A, a message that they qu didn't quite understand when Jesus had died if our earliest sources can be trusted. And so... What was it that accounted for this change? What was it that allowed disciples to go to their death for this message? You see, if they knew that they were lying, then the likelihood that many of them would have been willing to die for it is very low. You see, people die for things that are false all the time. But people don't typically die for something that they know is false. That brings us to the most popular explanation for, for the facts uh, surrounding the res resurrection of Jesus. And that would be the hallucination hypothesis. And see, hallucination hypothesis helps explain some of the serious data. I have focused on eyewitness testimony and the conversion of Paul in previous videos this week. The hallucination hypothesis attempts to explain away that strong data. Here's the problem. One, hallucinations are extremely rare. They're extremely rare. But not only that, to make them even more rare in the case of the resurrection accounts, you even more rarely have two kinds of hallucinations at the same time meaning that you don't typically see and hear someone at the same time. Auditory hallucinations are the most common, and they're not that common. Then you have visual hallucinations. But now what we're asking in the hallucination theory is for us to believe that both hallucinations happen simultaneously. And they do sometimes, but extremely rare. And we're not asking that it happen to a single person, but we're asking that it happen to multiple people on multiple occasions, both friend and foe of the message of Christianity. But not only that, even if we granted that, which seems so against the odds, the hallucination hypothesis fails to account for the fact that the tomb was empty. I gave you evidence earlier in the week for the empty tomb, but even today I mentioned the earliest claim is that the disciples stole the body, assuming that the body was not there. You don't make the claim that the disciples stole the body if Jesus is in fact sitting in the tomb. So the oldest 
and the most popular skeptical explanations fail to account for all of the historical data. The very best explanation of the data is that Jesus bodily rose from the dead. The last line of evidence I'll give you, I think might be easy for some to shrug off, but I would encourage you, if you are still wrestling whether or not this event ever happened in history, one line of evidence that I think must be considered is the transformed lives of those who have believed in this message. Yes, I mean the disciples. Yes, I mean the Apostle Paul. Yes, I mean James, the brother of Jesus. But I also mean the church that has been around for 2,000 years ever since. Myself and others around you have been transformed by this message, have dedicated their lives to this message. And it is the same power that God used to raise Jesus from the dead that he uses to raise us to spiritual life every day. I would encourage you, trust in the message that Jesus came to proclaim Trust in what Paul calls the good news, which is that Jesus died in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Jesus did this to pay the penalty for our sin and so that we may have eternal life. Trust in Jesus. Trust in that power of the resurrection. I leave you with this. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, Whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things.